I'm here. I will take over whenever you're ready. Uh, you are good to go, <laughs> sweetie, because you, you got the introductions. Awesome. Well, like Miss Wesley said, welcome, everyone. Tonight, we're going to do our orientation for the class of 2026. So the students that will be ninth graders at Henry Clay next year. Um, for our introductions, we'll start with Mr. Little. I saw Mr. Little on here earlier. He is our principal. If you want to say hello real quick. Yes, that was your principal playing with Spider-Man. I apologize. They're all over the place. Um, I just want to welcome you to, I guess, what's your first official meeting with the Henry Clay staff, you know, as a parent, we're looking forward to working with you and your, your children. Um, I'm a father of four. I have a first grader, an eighth grader, a 10th grader, and a senior. So I have all, all ages, all types of school going on. Um, I will tell you this, you're bringing your children to a wonderful school and what makes it so good is the staff, our teachers, our counselors, uh, custodians, all faculty and staff at Henry Clay love students. They love our children. Everybody looks out for everybody. Um, your child's going to be challenged academically, you're going to be loved. So I don't know what more you could ask for. Again, uh, I'm not going to take up much of your time. Just want to say welcome. And I, I can be reached through email. Uh, you can schedule a meeting, be up there all summer if there's anything concerns you have about our school or questions, anything you've heard, you want to come walk around, we'll be available. Look forward to meeting and working with all of you folks. Thank you. So that was Mr. Little. He's our head principal. For our associate principals, we have Dr. Jamie Allen. We have Chad Carpenter and Laura Donovan. And then our Dean of Students is Demetrius Gay. Ms. Wesley. I lost your screen. There it is. The Academy Coordinator for our Liberal Arts Academy, anyone that is participating in that, the coordinator is Ms. Catherine Stevens. We, we do want to point out that we won't talk about the Academy tonight, but the information that we talk about is, you know, will apply to those students as well. But know that if you're in the Academy, you'll have an orientation later on in April. And then our youth service coordinator, you'll hear from her tonight. That's Miss Sierra Bowman. Um, all scheduling information provided tonight is available on the Henry Clay Counseling website. That's a great resource. And everything we talk about tonight, as well as a copy of this presentation that is being recorded, that'll be tonight. you'll be able to find that on the website as well. Just a reminder, Miss Wesley pointed out earlier, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. We have Miss Howard running the chat tonight, and we'll be able to answer your questions either privately or if it's something we think Everyone would like to know. We'll answer it out loud for everybody. Who is your school counselor? For your academic counselor at Henry Clay High School, we have six counselors and it's broken down by last name. So the way we do it is we will stay with our students all four years of high school. So next year when you're a freshman, you will be, you'll have that counselor all four years. If your last name is A through CA, you'll have Miss Sharon Wesley Porter. If your last name is C-E through G-O-L-L, -L, your counselor is Miss April Kane. The last name is G-O-M through K-H, Miss Rachel Howard. K-I through N is myself, Mr. Jordan Torrance. O through S-L, Mr. Josh Edwards. And then last name S-M through Z, your counselor is Miss Ashley Harris. At this time, I'm going to turn it over to Miss Bowman, our youth service coordinator. Ms. Bowman says that she is in the waiting room. Can anyone see her in the waiting room? No, did we send her the link with the new tonight's presentation? Um, or is she trying to get in with today's link? She might be trying to get in with today's link. Can someone forward that to her please? I will. We apologize for these delays. It's been a year since we've been doing um, NTI slash Zoom <laughs> slash we're back on this again. So um, yeah, this is kind of crazy.
Has she come on yet? Not give yet. You a little, give, to give you a little background about Sierra Bowman, she is a graduate of Henry Clay High School. Uh, she was, there she is. Um, she is a graduate of Henry Clay High School and she, uh, she started our uh, Youth Services Center coordinator position. She got that position a year and a half ago and she is an awesome person to work with. She is great with resources. If you don't know the answer so, to something, you can always email her or call her and she probably has the answer or she will find out an answer for you. So Sierra, I'm gonna turn it over to you, sweetie. Okay, now, hello, good afternoon, good evening. Um, I just logged on, but basically I think at every middle school there's a youth service coordinator, but if not, like uh, Ms. Wesley said, I'm here to assist with any major needs, clothes, um, deodorant, socks, anything that you may need your student needs immediately, or if something happens at home where electric got cut off, you need extra resources, you want to get your driver's license, you want to find a job. Um, I help with all around the services when it has to do with you and your family. Um, my room number is 129A. You can come see me at any time along with, I always can use volunteers also um, to help out because throughout the year we have programming and we do other things for our students all year long. That's it for me. Ms. Ashley Harris. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Ms. Harris um, and like Coach Torrance said, I have students whose last names begin with S, M, all the way through Z. Um, I am going to just talk to you guys a little bit about um, some of the basics about Henry Clay as well as the graduation requirements. Um, so our mission at Henry Clay is to educate and prepare our students for a life of productive citizenship. We serve about 2,100 students um, with diverse populations. We are accredited by the Southern Association of Colleges and Secondary Schools, um, and all of our classes meet the college readiness curriculum. Approximately 85% of our students um, either go to a two-year or four-year university. And then Henry Clay um, requires their students to have at least 22 credits to graduate. As a couple of the other counselors said, um, feel free to use the chat to ask questions. Um, we will be answering those periodically through the presentation. Um, and we will also take questions at the end. So please, please, please use that chat box if you need it. Henry Clay operates on a six hour school day. So students will have the same six classes every day. Um, the first class begins at 825 in the morning and the last class ends at 315. Students will take six classes each year. Um, each class is worth one half of a credit. So each semester, students have the opportunity to earn three credits, giving them um, a total of six credits each school year. In addition to the six period um, classes, each student will attend a 25 minute advisory class after their third period class. To be in the 10th grade, students must earn at least five credits in the ninth grade. World language. So world language classes are not a graduation requirement from Henry Clay High School. Um, some colleges do require students to complete through level two of a language to be accepted into that college. Um, but again, students are not required to take a world language in ninth grade. I think that when um, we went to the middle schools, I know for me, 
That was one thing that students were surprised about when I told them that they do not have to take a world language. Um, so we just wanted to put that in the PowerPoint to let you all know that it's not a requirement, but we do recommend it um, if your student is thinking about college. Any questions so far? We don't have any in the chat room yet. All right. Graduation requirements. Each student must have four English credits, four math credits, three science credits, and three social studies credits. So you can see there, um, and we'll talk about this a little bit later in the presentation, um, some of our pathways for math and science. Um, and then for social studies, each student will have government, world history, and US history, um, some level of those three classes. Also, students must have one half credit of health and one half credit of PE to graduate from Henry Clay High School. Typically, students will take health and PE um, their sophomore year. Some students will take it in the summer um, between ninth and 10th grade. This does have a fee. Um, it's not required for students to take health and PE in the summer. Um, it's just an opportunity if they do not want to take it in the in the regular school year, they can take it in the summer. Um, we don't have dates yet for that, but we will send that information out um, a little bit later in this semester um, by email. Um, we did want to highlight that the fitness class um, that some ninth graders choose to take does not meet the health and PE um, requirement. So if your student is taking the fitness class, that will just count as a regular elective. And then you can see that students will need one arts and humanity credit. Um, this can be earned in a multiple different ways. Um, it can be met by taking two years of music, art, and or theater. Um, it also can be taken through Canvas um, and it's an online course. They can earn the credit that way. And then six elective credits um, for a grand total of 22 credits. And Ashley, I want to add, because this was a question in the chat, yeah. um, and we forgot to mention this at the beginning, we do have several parents on here that have students who have applied to the Liberal Arts Academy. And tonight's presentation is going to give you a huge amount of information about graduation and what is required to graduate from Henry Clay. However, the specific requirements for academy will be talked about um, from a point of Ms. Stevens, who is the academy coordinator, and she plans on having a parent orientation in April once all applicants have been notified and have um, given their, uh, what do you call it, the uh, admission letter saying, yes, I'm coming to Henry Clay. So you guys will be notified of that once that happens. And then just to talk a little bit more about the pre-college curriculum, um, this is the same as the Henry Clay graduation requirements um, with the exception of the world language requirement. Um, so if, like I said, if your student is thinking about going to college, then we do recommend that they um, start out in the world language. Um, some more selective colleges um, will require um, some additional requirements, um, like an additional um, credit in science, social studies, and then also three years of a world language. Um, so just keep that in mind um, when your student is thinking about what college they want to go to. I see someone said, is it possible for students to take four years of a language? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> So next we're going to take a look at what a typical ninth grade schedule will look like. 
um, and kind of cover the scheduling piece. Uh, this is, I think, what the kids are most uh, interested in. Um, so as previously stated, we're on a we're traditional six period day. Students are going to have their four core classes and two electives. Uh, so everyone's going to choose uh, an English class, regular or advanced. If, they, if students choose advanced, there uh, is required summer reading, and that is in the program of studies booklet that we gave to students, and that is also posted on our website. There are recommended books for students who choose general, uh, but it's recommended, not required. There will be no test on any of those. And then for math, students are pretty much going to move on from where they've been in eighth grade math. So if they're in an eighth grade math, it's going to be they're going to start in algebra one. Um, if they're in algebra one now, they may start in advanced geometry. If they've already started in advanced geometry, they may start in advanced algebra two. So it really just depends on what their eighth grade math class is. Students are going to take a science, and that's going to be either introduction to physics or advanced biology. And we're going to look a little more in detail of what those stars mean in uh, another slide. And then every ninth grader takes government and it's either advanced or AP, which is advanced placement. And then they'll take two electives. One thing I'll say on that there, you'll see the two stars by advanced biology. Um, to do the advanced biology, students need to be in advanced math class, either geometry or algebra two. And then the next slide is going to give you a visual of a year in the life of a ninth grader. April, let's pause for just a minute because I think Rachel has a very bad connection. And I don't know uh, her. The last question that she answered was about uh, academy students. Yes, academy students are required to take world languages. Uh, there was a question about students going to other programs such as STEAM Academy. Can they do band, sports, or clubs? The answer is yes, they can do band, sports, or clubs. However, you have to work that out with the band instructor. The sports and clubs are after school, so um, that is pretty much a given. You can transport your student back to Henry Clay to do those sports and clubs. Um, Another another question was about. I'm here. You had, can you hear me? Let's make sure that you can hear me. I can hear you. Okay. I was just waiting for a pause in the action. There were a lot of <laughs> questions about the world language. Um, I don't Let's know go if, back April, there. Yeah. if you wanted to address those. Um, the languages that are available are Spanish, French, and German. Yes, um, it's all on a slide that's to come. If There's one question about EKU, and um, that, I think, depends on what major you're doing at EKU. There are students that go to EKU without a language, um, but it still would be helpful. We recommend our students to go ahead and do it if they can so that they um, don't then necessarily have to do it in college, which would be harder than what they're doing at Henry Clay. Um, but it really kind of depends on the major for EKU. It'd probably be best to contact them with specific questions. Um, then there was a question about if they take the second year of language in middle school, do they have to take one year in high school or three years? Um, do we talk about that? Is there a slide about that? I think that um, we need to talk about the STEAM, I mean, what's it called? Not STEAM, stamp test that they could possibly take, mm -hmm. um, which I don't think we have a slide about that. So um, when we say two years of a world language, that means up through level two. So uh, having up through level two in middle school would fulfill that requirement. Right now, those middle school languages don't count for high school credit. 
So you really need high school credit, but we will have a stamp test in the spring that students can take. And if they can score high enough on it, then they can get high school credit for the language that they've had in middle school. And if they can score up through level two, then that will fulfill that requirement that we're saying colleges are looking for. Um, that's all the language questions. Did you answer the one about the college professors teaching the college credit courses? No. I guess that's not about world language. Um, and we try to organize our presentation, guys, because a lot of these questions are gonna be answered throughout the presentation. So please be patient with us trying to finagle all of this technology. Um, there was one question about the middle school taking two years of language in the middle school. My theory has always been, if you've had two years in the middle school consistently, then that is equivalent to Spanish one or French one in the high school. If you have had two years of a language in the high school through level two, that's about equivalent to one year of college, like two semesters of college. So it kind of breaks it down. So the answer to that would be, I would probably take a stamp test to see where you are placed. Do call, and I'm gonna go ahead and answer these since they're in there. Do college professors teach the college credit courses? Um, our teachers that teach the college credit, dual credit courses, which are offered to our seniors, um, they are certified through BCTC. If you've already taken Algebra 1 and Geometry at middle school, you can only bring one credit. That is the credit that you are taking in the eighth grade for high school credit. If it is not a high school credit course in your middle school, and we will talk about high school credits in the middle school later on, but that will be on the transcript. Uh, the prereq for government, we're going to cover that. And that is also in the information that we provided on the website and on the um, information we passed out to students. It's got a reading level requirement. When a student applies for vocational programs, when are they typically notified of acceptance? I'm not sure. Does anybody else know the answer to that? And we haven't been told about the, what we're here to do is schedule you for Henry Clay. If they get accepted into a technical center, we will work with your child and work with their schedule at Henry Clay and at the technical center. But we have not been notified of any student that has been accepted into the technical center yet. So as of right now, we are scheduling like a student is at a on a six period day at Henry Clay. Um, it says if well, we the, one of the counselors at a technical school emailed us today about that. Um, I would say we will probably know no later than April. Yeah. If we don't take algebra now, can we take algebra two? I'm not sure I understand that question, but we're going to go over requirements. Yeah, why don't we let guys... me finish yeah. the scheduling and I think it'll get... answer some of these. Yeah, let me get to the bottom real quick. Uh, would you have to do gym in high school? We'll talk about that. Yes, you have to have gym. Never been in English class in middle school because of ESL. That is an individual question for your counselor. So I'm going to go back to April now. Are you ready for the next slide, April? Sure am. And I'm not sure about the markings on here and who did that, but I can't get them off. So as I was saying, this slide is to kind of help give you a visual of what a year will look like. I like this slide because it um, points out a big difference from middle school to high school and something that I stressed very much with all the students that I talked to last week. Most middle schools are on four nine week periods. They get grades for each one. They're averaged together at the end of the year for one final grade. It's very different at the high school level. Oh, can you go back? Yeah. Um, in high school, we are on two 18-week semesters. 
So basically their first two nine weeks are combined into one 18 week semester. That's August through December. Our students take final exams the last three days of the semester in December, and then they get a final grade for that class. That grade earns students a half a credit per class passed, and it goes on their transcript. Their transcript is their academic record. It is what we are going to send to colleges when students apply in their senior year. So it's important and it matters beginning in ninth grade. The spring semester is January to May. Again, the last three days of this semester in May, they take final exams, grades are finalized, they earn a half a credit for every class pass, hopefully a whole credit for the year. So the semesters are separate. This means you have to work hard all, work hard all year long. Um, you cannot slack off first semester, pick it up second semester, and then hope that those two are gonna average together to save a low first semester. They're not, they're two separate semesters. And that's a huge, huge difference that it tends to take us a little while to get students to understand. So basically they can earn up to three credits per semester, six for the year. Their, um, some middle schools starting this year are offering some classes for high school credit. Those are going to already those are going to be put on the high school transcript by the middle school counselors, meaning those students will not have to take those classes again unless they just feel like they need another year of it. For example, some students may take English 1, so they'll be signing up, can sign up for English 2 as a freshman. The Algebra one, geometry, again, if those are taken and credits earned in middle school, then the students may start further in the math sequence into algebra two. All students are gonna be able to get through algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and an additional math credit. That was a question um, in the chat. All right, you can go ahead to the next slide. Uh, this, gives just a little extra information on selecting the four core classes. In English, again, if the students in eighth grade English, they're going to sign up for English one, they can choose general or advanced. If they're in English one now and they're going to earn credit for it, um, they can take English two next year. Again, advanced requires summer reading, check it out in the program of studies. For math, if a student is in an eighth grade, regular eighth grade math class, they take algebra one. If they're already in that then, and are gonna earn credit for that, then they can start ahead. You'll see some of the guidelines to take these, these are recommended. The eighth grade teachers will cover all of this with the students and help them with the recommendations as well. For social studies, the choices are advanced or AP. AP is a college level class. You'll see the recommendation on the MAP reading test. Um, it's not just that, you know, this it requires a lot more outside work and outside reading. And a student needs to really look at all that they do and make sure that they strike a good balance. Um, there are many students who are capable, have the ability of the AP level classes, but with the other classes they have with sports or activities or jobs or life, it doesn't always work. So they really need to take a, a look at um, how it's gonna fit in if they're ready for it in ninth grade, um, but it is an option. And again, the eighth grade teacher is really the best person to help make that recommendation. And the next slide talks about science options and they really are related to your math. Like I said before, there are two options for ninth graders, introduction to physics, 
and advanced biology. Typically, students who start on the intro track continue on that, but they don't have to. If they do, you'll see the top row that they're going to do intro to physics, intro to chemistry, sophomore year, and then intro to biology, their junior year. That, if you're taking algebra one, that's the path that you will start on. You'll see the second row that students who start in introduction to physics may then choose their sophomore year to switch to advanced biology, and that's fine. The reason that we move the biology to sophomore year for those students who want to switch to advanced biology is that we want them in advanced algebra two when they take chemistry. So this is the path that will get them there. They'll switch up to advanced geometry sophomore year and they can take the advanced biology so that they're in advanced algebra two when they're taking advanced chemistry because of the math involved with the chemistry. Students who are signing up for an advanced math class in ninth grade can choose to start in advanced biology. And then you'll see the path that most of them will be on, advanced chemistry and then advanced or AP physics their junior year. They can choose to take an intro class in future years, um, just noting that if they're gonna end up switching to intro to physics as a junior year, it is a primarily freshman class at that, that point. And then you will see some of the prereqs listed there as well. And the last two slides I'm gonna talk about are the ninth grade electives. This is another thing that we stress with the students. Our electives are all year long. Students who've been in a world language or a music class are used to you know, having that class all year long. Um, but the majority of middle school classes are nine weeks and they rotate. Uh, these are all your classes. So we stress to please choose classes that you are interested in, not ones that your friends tell you to take. Um, we have 2,100 students. We have many sections of our electives. So we cannot guarantee that anybody's gonna have a class that they pick with their friend. And so they really need to choose a class that they are interested in. Um, we have three world languages, French, German, and Spanish. Again, students may be able to start in a level two or three of that class, depending on their middle school background. Again, the eighth grade teacher can help with that. As mentioned, the stamp test is also an option to help uh, in figuring that out. Uh, we encourage our students to uh, get involved in a pathway um, a career. We want our students to all be um, college or career ready by the time they graduate. And to do that based on the state of Kentucky, um, that is having the world language classes that meet the pre-college requirement or following a pathway. So our career and technical education classes that follow that are listed there in our program of studies booklet. You can see the actual pathways and see the other classes that would go with that to uh, know what it would look like to complete a pathway. And then the uh, last slide is a list of other electives available to ninth graders. Students are going to take two electives we have asked them to pick four and rank them one through four uh, in case we need to go to one of their alternates, but everybody will have at least two. I do want to point out that anybody who's taking jazz band or um, marching band, those are basically extra classes that meet outside the normal school day and that would not count in the total. So what questions do we have about scheduling? Ms. Howard, 
I don't see any questions in the chat, but I am noticing that Ms. Wesley, I think some people are messaging you um, individually. And so everybody's not seeing those questions. So maybe if you address those, also let us know what the question was. Um, yeah, some of those questions were for individual students, but um, there was one question about transcripts you will get final grades at the end of December first semester that will be on your transcript and then you get a final grade at the second semester and that's on your transcript. So there are two different terms semester one some uh, term one, whatever you want to call it and semester two term two. Okay, so now there are some questions coming in. Um, do you have to take band to be in marching band? Yes, I believe they do require that you have a band class to be in marching band unless they're in the color guard. If you're in the color guard, then you don't necessarily have to have a band class. Um, do you need to take a language or career pathway or can you choose from the two, two from the other electives? We really would like for you to choose your first elective from either a language or a career pathway. Um, what classes are available for college credit? You know, that's going to come as seniors. Uh, so we're a long way from there and it may change by the time you guys are seniors. But right now we have English and math that are offered at Henry Clay, uh, plus a wide variety of AP classes that can potentially get you college credit. Um, so we have many of those uh, as choices. Um, and then I guess that last question was answered. There was a you, question about uh, a student be in tech school and band. Mm -hmm. uh, the answer oh, is yes. Well. It just takes some working with the counselor from the beginning, from day one, uh, before the student even starts, to really map out a four-year plan to fit all of the requirements in. Um, so students who are identified GT, will they be given preference? No. And our schedule is built on um, student choices. Um, so, you know, so the classes that students choose, we make our schedule built around that, the number of students that choose classes, and it doesn't have to do with whether you're identified GT or not. Um, for the PC, do you need your own PC? That'll be, every student will be provided with a Chromebook. Um, then there's a question, the math prerequisite for AP Computer Science. I don't know the answer to that, do you guys? I'm trying to look, it's in the program of studies on our website. I'm trying to get to it. So you guys will see a lot of resources and we'll talk about that too, but there are a lot of resources on our website, on the counseling tab on a scheduling tab, beyond that tab. And um, you can find the program of studies there as well as, well as a lot of other information. Uh, and all the prerequisites are in that program of studies. And it maybe, I don't know if this is. is in, is it in the presentation, but this program of studies, the back half of the book is full of course descriptions and prerequisites and information like that. In the program of studies under informational technology on page 13, it has the AP computer science. And for the AP computer science principles, you have to have a successful completion of a B or higher in algebra one. And for AP computer science, you must have completed or be concurrently taking advanced algebra two. So again, those are in the program of studies. There was a question in here too about, do students need to take a language career pathway or can they choose two from the other electives? In the instructions on our scheduling webpage for ninth graders, when you choose to take a world language as a ninth grader, that is sort of like saying you are taking the pre-college pathway immediately so therefore your other electives are wide open. However, if you do not take a world language as a ninth grader, then you are required to choose an elective from one of the career pathways. 
Now you can take two from the career pathways if you want to, but it's an, an either or thing. You can take a world language and a career pathway, or you can take a world language and anything else. But you have to have either a world language or a career pathway, one of those. So that is, and I'll, I'll try to share that sheet before we stop with our PowerPoint. Ms. Wesley, what is their deadline for picking classes? What is their what? Their deadline for entering their classes. It is January 25th. And I'm gonna go over that when I take over the screen here in a second. And then there's uh, one of the questions about TV radio was answered. And oh yeah, I see Ms. Kane is typing information into the chat. I don't know if everybody's able to monitor the chat, but there was a question about TV radio production and it, we have a class and Eastside has a program and then about keys money, we will talk about it later, but yes, mm -hmm. you get different amounts of keys money depending on um, what your DPA is in high school each year. And that's all the questions so far. So I'm gonna talk about entering your electives in the IC portal. And so I'm going to um, share a different screen now and go to the Henry Clay website. If I can do that. And actually, let me see, here we go. I got several screens going on guys, so please forgive me. So Ashley, let me know if I'm sharing the correct screen because you know how, how um, Zoom goes, you never know what you're sharing. We can see the Henry Clay High School website. So when you go to the Henry Clay High School website and you click on counseling, You will scroll over here and find scheduling 2022-2023. There is a complete video right here. There's also an instruction sheet to help students enter the request into their infinite campus portal. You will also see down at the bottom class of 2026, and it's got the Henry Clay program of studies instructions for entering your choices for eighth graders. There's two pages. Uh, the subject choice card, that's just to help you to look at everything. You've got technical school information here. And then you, you've got this January 18th parent orientation Zoom meeting, that's tonight. But the deadline, when you go into this information sheet, and Ashley, can you see the information sheet? You'll see this is what we gave your eighth grade student. And you have between now and January 25th, and the portal will close at four o'clock on January 25th. And here is some information about selecting your world languages or career and tech ed classes. Um, and then it gives you the other electives. On the second page, it also gives you how to choose in your academic plan. So you will go to your infinite campus and you will navigate to the academic plan and it'll ask you, and these, these are not permanent buttons. I'm gonna share once again, an academic plan with you. So you can see this. Ashley, are we on the academic plan? Yeah. So right here, the very first thing I ask you, post-grad location. This can be changed any day, anytime, anywhere, all year long. So if you choose that you're going in-state and you're going to a college in Kentucky, you can go back and change that anytime you want. That is not permanent. So just keep that in mind because I've already had kids ask me, oh my gosh, if I choose that, do I have to, do I have to, to go in-state? No. That can be changed at any time. 
So next, you're going to see your academic plan here. And I was able to ask permission from a senior student if I could use his academic plan tonight, because obviously we cannot log in as students unless they let us, allow us, whatever. But here you can see when you click in these boxes, he cannot choose any of his English because English has to be chosen by the teacher or the counselor. So teachers and counselors, um, teacher's deadline has already passed. So a student would have to see their counselor at this point. We have not met with students yet in, in the ninth, 10th, 11th grades. And this student is currently in 11th grade. So I have not entered anything here yet. The same thing for math, we do have some options here for 12th graders that they can choose some math. But again, eighth graders, I believe your English, math, science, and social studies will be recommended for you. But down here in electives is where you wanna go. Here, you can choose by typing in, let's say you wanna take Spanish and you can choose. And he's already had Spanish, so I'm gonna type in French. You can choose like French one, and you'll want to choose both semesters. The semester here, semester one and semester two, it shows you right there. You can continue typing in, um, let's say he wants to take art. Maybe he's already had art. If he's already had a class, you can't type it in, but for your purposes, we'll do con computer assisted art. And then they just keep typing in their classes for what they want. Once you finish, you will click save and click okay. And that way we know what you want to do as far as electives go. And I know that's a lot of information, but again, if you go to that Henry Clay website, it will give you specific step-by-step -step instructions. Also, your middle school counselors are very aware of the academic plans and how to do those. Feel free to email your individual counselor. And guys, um, last year, I got in a situation to where even though I'm sending out emails through the messenger, please, please make sure you email your individual counselor because all I'm gonna do is forward you right on to your counselor. So make sure you are emailing your individual counselor direct. Ms. Wesley, um, there's a question. Does it have to be by the student in, the, in their infinite campus or can it be done by the parent in their infinite campus? It has to be done, I believe, in the student portal. And I've even had kid or uh, parents ask me, hey, can I just go in the student portal and do it for them? My answer is gonna be, I would really like for you to consult with your student child about their schedule and their electives because this is their experience. This is their four years. This is where they're gonna be spending the majority of their day. And I would really like for the students to have a say in what electives that they choose as far as high school goes. There's another question, I guess, since there's a pause, I'll go ahead and answer, not necessarily related to that, but <clears throat> they're asking um, if classes are year long, but they need a half a credit of PE and a half a credit of health, how does that work? They alternate four and a half weeks of one and four and a half weeks of the other. So it's the same teacher with the same students all year, but that teacher teaches both classes within the course of the year. And also there was a question about the fitness for life. It is taught in the gym and the classroom. They learn a little bit about fitness overall. It is not considered a PE credit as far as meeting the curriculum of PE for the state of Kentucky, because Fitness for Life is focusing more on the individual fitness 
whereas PE is focusing more on individual and team sports to expose them for all of that. Any other questions, Rachel, you wanna to refer to? Yeah, that PE health class is usually done in the sophomore year, unless it doesn't work out well with the student schedule, in which case we could move it to another year, but usually done in the sophomore year. Um, actually, I think maybe we had it, maybe that was a slide, but anyway, um, or some students do it in the summer between their freshman and sophomore year. And, and since you're talking about summer classes, summer health and PE is not open to incoming ninth graders. Um, so we will be covering that more next year for our ninth grade class of how to get signed up for summer health and PE. So just keep that in mind. You can put that on the back burner. Another question there, Rachel, about... How many elective yeah. options do the students list in IC? Mm -hmm. Do the Liberal Arts Academy do something different for scheduling? The Liberal Arts Academy students must do their academic plans as well. And when you list your electives in, in your academic plan, you will need to list at least four electives. You'll give your first preference, your second, your third, and your fourth. So you would list them in order of your preference. Now, if you change your mind before the window closes, you may have to delete those preferences and put them back in the order that you want them. So just make sure they're in the order that you want them. It says there it's- our... question. Oh, go how ahead, long? Rachel. There's a question, how long is that generally? I'm assuming that is about summer PE and that's two weeks over the summer. If that's not what you were asking about, let us know. And then there's that question about STEAM. Do you wanna get that one? Oh, it's a direct message, message, I'm sorry. I'll get that one. So that's it for now. So watch your email and guys, obviously you got this email link but it's so important that we keep emails up to date in Infinite Campus because that's how we make a lot of announcements. We give a lot of information. Um, I have been accused of over communicating, but I've never been accused of under communicating. So I guess that's a good thing. But most of our communication comes out in Messenger and um, that's kind of how we keep things updated. Again, make sure that you Contact your counselors individually. Next up is Josh Edwards, and he's gonna to talk to you about grading. Guys, hello everybody. Uh, I've been on the site-based council, I think 20 some years. And the second best decision we ever made besides hiring Mr. Little was changing the grading policy. So. I'm very happy that uh, now our grade, I think, did we change that last year? I think, but now it is 90, uh, now it is 90 to 100 for an A, a B's 80 to 89, a C's 70 to 79, a D is 60 to 69. And I know no students that you guys have is gonna make zero to 59, but that is an F, it, Miss Kane, uh, I just want to reiterate what she said earlier because every kid at Henry Clay hopefully has earned three credits and also has a GPA. So it's like we stated this earlier, but you get half the credit at winter break, the other half at summer break, but those don't average together. So for instance, if I'm in English class, I can't make an F first semester, make an A second semester and I get a C for the year and I get the whole credit. Just know that you have to pass both semesters that's very important to know for next year and i think the rest of this has been covered we do get a progress report every six weeks that we actually mail home but obviously you can check your kids grades anytime you want to on ic so please take advantage of that because 
the worst thing in the world is when it's December. We have so many kids, it's hard to keep track of all of them. So, you know, it's much easier to tackle bad grades early on in the semester than right before it ends. So please make sure you're checking grades. Miss Wesley, I think I'm ready. <clears throat> Guys, we talked about the keys money earlier, and I know everybody likes free money, but uh, this is actually free money the state gives your students, and all they have to do is at least make a 2.5. The higher the GPA is, the more money they get, and they average it at the end of the year. So, you know, if I made straight A's, that's 500 a year. By the time I finish high school, I could have 2,000 plus an ACT bonus. So, you know, that's quite a bit of money that you can use at any state school in Kentucky, and they actually give it to them each year. After that first semester, when they're freshmen, and I may be wrong about this, but I think I'm right, you can go to that KHEAA.com website and actually see how much money they've earned after their first, not the first semester, but after their first year. So you can check Hi Bentley. But you can check that each year, uh, the your keys money. But in, if you're on free reduced lunch, if you can get a three or higher on the AP exams, they'll also give you money for that. And that's a good point about the AP exams Ms. Howard was talking about earlier. In AP classes to earn the college credit, you take them and then in May you take an AP exam. It's out of five. Believe it or not, if you can get three or higher, most schools will give you college credit for that class. So uh, hopefully your kids will take full advantage of the free money that Keys gives you. Ms. Wesley, I think I'm ready. Josh, there was a question about Keys and Kentucky schools, and I feel like this is important for parents to know. Keys money was created to be used in Kentucky schools. However, there are several colleges that honor um, Keys money in certain ways. For instance, Hanover College, if you can present them with your keys printout, they will match that money in what's called a Hanover type academic scholarship. So you don't get the keys money from Kentucky, but Hanover gives you a scholarship that matches that if you're eligible for their scholarship money. Also, Cincinnati has an in-state tuition, but they don't accept keys money. So every college is very, very different. When you start asking questions about a specific college, your best bet is to go onto their website. And if it's not there, contact one of their admission counselors. You can also use keys money in academic programs that are not offered in the state of Kentucky. For many years, students were going to Florida and to Southern states and majoring in marine biology because Kentucky did not have any such major in any Kentucky school. Well, I believe that has changed now because now we do have that marine biology. University of Alabama actually created a major that was not offered in Kentucky. It's um, a type of liberal, liberal arts major, and I can't remember the name of it, but if you contact Alabama, you can find out what that major is. So there's many ways to work this keys money, but just know that the keys money is made specifically for Kentucky colleges, but you need to contact those colleges individually if you have questions. And, and guys, great information, Miss Wesley, but also you don't, if you stay in state and go to school, you don't have to do any, apply for anything. They just automatically apply when you get into college to your, towards your tuition. So, and I, we've even had some kids that some schools that they've gotten so many scholarships that they actually can get that in cash money if they've earned enough scholarships. So this bottom line is, we, I don't know how much we've mentioned it tonight, but GPA is super important. It can give you free money. We're gonna talk about athletes in a second. And it also can uh, just remember that the, every kid at Henry Clay that's a freshman right now has a GPA now since we posted grades for the fall semester. So just make sure, I can't tell you how many, we should have some kids probably come on here, but I can't tell you how many students that I have that are seniors that wish they tried a little harder those first, first couple of years mm -hmm. because now they're not getting a scholarship or they're an athlete not eligible for NCAA or they're not getting into the school they want. So please, please they can make sure they get off to a good start. Ms. Wesley, I think I'm ready for the next. Well, and also 
for keys money, do you have to use it in college? There are some career and technical programs out there, um, like the Ready for Work program that will use keys money. So any program other than college that you're looking at, you will want to always bring that up about keys money or when you talk to your financial aid advisor um, at any of those programs, they will let you know if they do use keys money. Um, but if you're not going to college, if you're going to work straight out of high school, you can use that keys money um, later on. Like you can work for a year and then come back and use the money um, after you've worked for a year if you want to. You just got, and to, I know you that, got to start using it within the first two years. And I know that BCTC offers, you know, carpentry, HVAC, plumbing, cosmetology. So I know they have a lot of two-year programs and you can definitely use it there. Uh, the next slide is about progress. This is where high school is a little different. It doesn't matter how much we love your child. They have to earn credits to go to the next grade. So to be a 10th grader, they're going to have to get five credits. To be an 11th grader, they have to earn 10 credits. Uh, and to be a 12th grader, they have to earn 16. And then to graduate, they have to earn 22. And I hate to keep harping on this, but just remember, they earn half the credits at winter break and the other half of the credits at summer break. They don't average together for the year. So just make sure you're doing well both semesters. Ms. West, there I were, think you do. Go there ahead. Were questions. Yeah. Uh, they're about the academic plan, though, Ms. Wesley. Someone asked, um, when does it open? And I believe you opened it today, right? I opened it today. So they should be able to see that um, by going through those instructions, going to the student portal, and then they click on academic plan and they scroll down to the electives and they can enter that. And another question was, can they enter multiple windows? Um, you know, I'm gonna be honest, I'm not sure, but definitely fill out your ninth grade year because that's what we're worried about right now. Um, we can start filling those in. This is the first time that all six high schools in Fayette County have started using this academic plan for students. So this is all new to us as well. And um, we're kind of learning as we go. But if you want to fill in all four years with your electives, that's fine. I probably would not recommend that because those change every single year. And um, the ninth grade year is what's important right now. Ms. West, I think we're good. Yeah. Guys, I was talking about the GPA and NCAA eligibility earlier. This, you really don't have to worry about doing the NCAA clearinghouse to their junior year. But just so you know, their freshman year is going to affect it because they look at your core classes for the GPA. So that's basically English, math, social studies, science, and foreign language. And, I'm, and I may have left, but it's just the core classes. But that's where they take the GPA. They don't take the elective GPA as well. And the higher that GPA is, the lower your test score can be. So Ms. Smith who used to be a counselor here, always said something that stuck in my head. It's much easier to control your grades than your test score. So athletes, we've talked about scholarships. We've talked about getting in school. GPA is going to be very important for athletes and it starts your freshman year, first semester. So athletes, please take care of that GPA because you could be the greatest athlete at your sport in the world, but if you don't qualify through the clearinghouse, you can't take the scholarship. And Ms. Wesley is actually our NCAA guru. Do you have anything you'd like to add to that? The only thing I have to add is that I do not upload transcripts until after the junior year. And that is because NCAA has told me not to upload transcripts until after the junior year. So it really doesn't pay to really register any sooner than the junior year, but just be aware of those electives and what's required of the NCAA, because if you have D's and F's, it's gonna be hard to qualify for NCAA. I've had coaches, I'll throw this in here and you can tell your kids this. I've had coaches come into my office before and before they even reach out to the student or the parents 
they'll say, I'd like to see their transcript. They have applied to such and such college and they're wanting to play sports. Um, let me see the transcripts. And I have had coaches come in and they look at the transcript and they walk right back out the door without even talking to the student because mm -hmm. it's in such bad shape that they do not want to deal with a kid that is not keeping their grades up. And that's just coming from the college level. So encourage your student athletes to have good grades and make sure that they make the grade to be eligible. Ms. West, I think we're ready for the next. And I should say that Ms. Wesley is the guru of many things at Henry Clay, not just the NCAA. But guys, next thing is orientation. That will be sometime in August and they'll email that information out to you guys. To me, the most important thing about the orientation is as an adult, when I walked into Henry Clay 24 years ago, it was a little confusing the way the building was laid out even for me. So I always tell the students, please come to that orientation because if you get nothing else out of it, you're going to at least know where you're going on the first day of school. And a lot of the teachers will be there and the clubs and activities and sports will be there. So if at all possible, please come to that orientation. I think they feed you, so uh, which is always important to me, but please make sure that you get your student to the orientation because I think it'll be very beneficial if nothing else, just so to sort of know where they're going on the first day of school. And we'll retouch on a lot of this information we're telling you, you guys during that as well. Ms. Wesley, I think I'm ready. Uh, guys, there is a direct correlation between extracurriculars and student success. I mean, the most successful students we have are usually involved in something. And I, as you can tell by my accent, I went to a smaller high school. I'm amazed at the amount of activities and extracurriculars that Henry Clay offers. I mean, we have even an archery team. I would have liked to done the Star Wars Club, but just remember, we have a club for almost everything. We have all kinds of sports. The ROTC program's amazing at Henry Clay, but please try to get involved because I promise the more involved your student is, the more they're gonna like coming to school. So just check those out. Like I said, a lot of those will be at the orientation. So that's another good reason to go to that, a lot of the club sponsors. Ms. Wesley, I think I'm ready for the next one. Here's a question. Let's pause right here for some questions. Um, one of the questions that was asked in the chat was about scheduling and they said they did not, they could not choose the AP government. Just a reminder, like we said earlier, English, math, science, and social studies were all recommended by the core teachers at the middle school level. If there is nothing entered there, then there's one of two ways that this can be done. All students were given a green subject choice card and we're told to fill the green subject choice card out and return to their counselor at their middle school, which those will eventually come back to us. Another way you can do that is email your individual high school counselor and say, hey, can you put AP government in my academic plan? Make sure you always, always include your child's first and last name, because we get a lot of emails from parents who have different last names or emails even for, hey, can you change my child to this? And they don't even put who they are. Another question we've got is about ROTC. Um, it just says, what about ROTC? So I'm gonna hand that back to Andy and say, yeah, what about ROTC? What's your question? Uh, we do have ROTC one, two, three, and four. So if you want to choose ROTC, that is a pathway. Um, so that's great. And the ROTC, guys, just so you know, is the it's Army related, but you don't have to join the Army if you're in ROTC. It's more like a leadership class. They do have to wear a uniform once per week, but it's they do a lot of extracurricular stuff outside of school that's fun. They work out, but these kids seem to really be drawn to that. The guy that both guys that run that Colonel Mason and Sergeant Hunt are amazing. I think if your kid doesn't have really a place they fit in, I think it's a really good activity if they're interested in that at all. <laughs> guys, finally, uh, 
I said school involvement's a huge factor in success for students, but the other thing is what you guys are doing tonight, parental involvement. We really, really appreciate you coming here. I think one of the only good things of COVID is Zoom has helped us be able to get to you guys and make it easier for you to Zoom in with us and having to come to school when we have bad weather like today. But uh, we really appreciate you coming to Henry Clay. And I think we'll probably see if we have any more questions to answer than Miss Wesley, you may have something to end it with. Um, I just wanna thank everybody for coming. Again, if you go to that Henry Clay website, you can like find a lot of information about scheduling the program of studies. You can find our email addresses on the instruction sheet. Um, so we do have, um, go ahead, Rachel. Um, a question. Rachel, you're breaking up. I think you were saying something about a question in the chat room. There was a question about returning the green subject choice card in an ROTC. Yes, please, cur please cur complete the green subject choice card and return it to your middle school counselor. Like we said, this is a totally new practice that we're doing with the academic plan. So the green ap academic card is our backup. The ROTC is an elective and you can take it your freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior years, which gives you a total of four years. And if, is there anyone else that has a question? Uh, this program is being recorded. And we will try to get this uploaded by tomorrow on the Henry Clay scheduling website. That way you can watch it and fast forward or back up, whatever you need to do. Please, please, please feel free to email your individual counselor and let us know if you have any questions by providing your child's first and last name. Any other questions? It says if, if they take ROTC, do they have to take a world language? No, if you look back on that sheet that I showed earlier, the instruction sheet, you had a choice of choosing a world language or one of the electives from the pathways and ROTC is a pathway. Another question was about STEAM Academy. Do they need to wait for scheduling? My practice has always been complete your schedule as if you're attending Henry Clay all six periods next school year. Because what will happen is if STEAM does not get you rolled over into their system, we will be contacting you again going, hey, what do you want to take? So if you just go ahead and complete it, it'll get us off your back and you won't hear from us. But, but STEAM will be the people that you need to talk to about the schedule. It says, what is the 25 minute thing after third hour? Advisory guys, we talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, 25 minute advisory is a chance for students to one day out of the week, they get their so social emotional learning. One day out of the week, they will be given financial literacy. They will also be given information about um, scheduling because we're doing that through advisories and anything else that comes through. So it's actually a time to regroup, work with an individual teacher on makeup work or um, run to the library. It's, it's just a quick 25 minutes for them to just catch up and do whatever they need to do during that time in addition to allowing us to provide instruction that is required by the state of Kentucky. Is that a good answer, Josh? Do you have anything else to add with that? I think I think that's a great answer and it's been very helpful for us to be able to give information out to all mm -hmm. grades because we don't have to pull them out of class so I think your student will enjoy it sort of a little break through the day too yeah how does dismissal work out 
I'm not sure what that question is asking, but I'm assuming that if parents need to check students out, they have to go through the attendance office. Otherwise, the bell rings at 315 and it is a release from the classroom at 315 and students either leave school and walk home, ride the bus home or hop in the car with the parents. Any other questions? What is the process of dismissal? I think I answered that with 315, the bell rings, kids are let go out of school, pretty much the same as middle school, I think. You are dismissed to go to the bus. It says, are they dismissed at the same time? Yes, we are on a bell schedule. All students change classes at the exact same time. All students start school at 825. All students are released from school at 315. Like let the car numbers and their I think Rachel is trying to talk about <laughs> bus numbers. Rachel, you're breaking up again. Rachel's breaking up. She's got a bad connection. She might have been trying to talk about bus numbers, but students can go on um, the Fayette County Public School website and look up their bus. Okay, it's fine. Don't worry about it. All you have to do is go up to the top right hand corner and click on the bus. Another question was, are the hallways organized by grade? Uh, no. <laughs> no, they are not. We have... Um, most of the core classes are divided by grade levels, such as English, science and social studies, but a lot of those are mixed in either ninth and 10th. Electives, a lot of those are mixed in nine through 12. So you're gonna see a mixture of just about everything. Uh, another question on how will we navigate the school? Uh, you will be given a map and a map is provided in your program of studies book that we gave out. We also invite all incoming ninth grades to our freshman orientation in August, which we will send out invitations. So make sure you come and you will be able to walk your schedule. Any other questions? Well guys, thank you so, so much for attending tonight. We really look forward to meeting you and seeing your ninth grade students at Henry Clay. Um, Josh, do you have anything to add? No, just once again, thank you for coming and taking time out of your day for us. Rachel, Look do you have to anything to add? I see you back on. <laughs> Ashley? Hi, you have like a good night, everyone. April Kane, are you still with us? I think we lost. She had staple. to log off. She just texted me. Okay. Oh, another question. Do we have to purchase an ROTC uniform? ROTC uniforms are issued by the ROTC program, but you will have to do some fundraising to help out that program. Guys, it's been a great evening. Have a good night. Look forward to seeing you soon. Email your individual counselors with questions. Good Thanks, night. Dad. Thank you. I've been listening. I just wanted to tune in and say thank you. Great job, counselors, and thank you, parents. Thanks, thank Paul. You